Why do pitch meetings exist in the first place? Executives sort of have this issue where they need lots of stuff to make their jobs functional. Um, and it is impossible for all of those ideas to come from one place. You can't just create all of them in the boardroom. Um, and they need outside influence. They need people who are much more in a creative uh, uh, mindset to be able to sort of like, executives look at these things as problems. It's, it's, you're walking in saying, you know, we need X number of films this year. We need 20 films on our, our calendar for Q4. And that's all they're thinking about is much more just like, what are we going to slate when and where? What are we going to program for this month? What are we going to program for this quarter? And they sort of need, um, we need a lot of assistance in terms of like, okay, what are we going to fill that with? Like, I'm really good at you know, getting a deal together. I can get the financing together. I can create the opportunity of this is the movie we're gonna make. A lot of the deals I do, we're making, we're making movies before the movie exists, before there's a script. It's a concept, but I've closed many, many deals that are just you know, a big contract with financial numbers attached to it and all the titles are to be determined movie number one, number two, number three, and it's a package of films. That's when we go out to creative uh, uh, outlets, whether it's production companies, development executives that we know, screenwriters that we know, and it's much more about like, look, we need some films here, what do you have? Or I set up a deal, or I'm sorry, I set up a meeting with um, a network or a VOD platform, and they wanna know what films we have. And so I will go out to like writers that we work with a lot and sort of say, I'm meeting with this client, you know, what do you have that sort of matches these types of genres? Um, and then I'll just take two or three log lines that they have, I'll put them all together and we'll present them and see what sticks, so to speak. And it's sort of, pitching is much more about taking the creative aspect of filmmaking or television production or new media in general and making it a business case or taking the business opportunity and adding that splash of creativity to it that makes the whole thing stick together. That's sort of the gist of it. But it's really about like just fielding information so we can close the deal. Will Hollywood always have pitch meetings? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's every industry has pitch meetings. Dating has pitch meetings. It's, it's, um, pitching is really about taking your opportunity as a person and sort of just saying like, this is what I can deliver. This is what I can make happen. It's, um, you have to sort of look, if you just sit around and, and wait for the, you know, proverbial phone call, like it's never going to come, you know, it's, you do have to step out there in the world and sort of create your own opportunities. Opportunities never come in clean, neat packages. They're usually problems. And um, companies have problems all the time. And you know, it's, it's looking at those and saying, I can find a way in here, get my foot in the door, so to speak, and solve that problem. And I have the talents to do it. And here's how and why. That's all pitching is. It's, it's every industry, every scenario in your life involves a, a deal of pitching. If you're negotiating anything in your life, if you're negotiating, I don't know, with, how you want to decorate your house with your spouse or partner. Like there's, you're pitching ideas and you're presenting concepts and bringing that to the table. But in terms of Hollywood, in terms of the media business, um, that's the only way that you're going to be able to get your ideas heard is by sort of expressing what you think a project could be, how you think it should be executed. And I think what you should also be adding to that is that you're the most important person to deliver it because of, you know, whatever reasons you want to put in there. But that's pitching. It's all just what can you deliver? What can you bring to the table? How can you solve other companies or other people's problems? And that's how you get results. Well, yeah, you always hear about that when, uh, let's say, if you've ever watched any entrepreneurial pitches, a TV show or in live, it's always because someone wanted to solve a problem they had and yeah. they created something for the market. But how does someone know what quote unquote problems are at a, at a production company or a network? that they could be the one to solve that. In truth, there's always a bit of blindness to it. Um, even on my end, where we're meeting with, you know, the heads and the presidents of networks all the time. Uh, and even we are a little bit in the dark to a degree in terms of like, what decisions have they decided behind closed boardroom doors since the last time we chatted with them? Um, but a great way to look at this is uh, if you, most of these companies are like massive publicly traded companies. 
I'm not an MBA. I'm not like some big business guru. I just kind of like getting movies made and I'm sort of more creative on the deal making side, not on the uh, story side. Um, that's sort of how I look at it. But most of these companies, whether it's Netflix, AMC Networks, Discovery, Paramount, they're all publicly traded. And why that's important is that anybody can get on their website and there's always going to be some tab in there called investors. And if you get on those and you can look for documents called 10Ks or 10Qs, and these are required by law that they publish these big documents. They're insanely long. They're like 300, 400 pages. You don't have to read them all. But if you actually skim through the first couple of pages, there's usually like a letter from the CEO. There's like a breakdown of the marketplace. There's a breakdown of what they're trying to do in the next year, the next quarter. And they list it all out there. Like they literally tell you like A to B, this is what we're trying to do. This is where we're trying to get to. These are the problems we have. Uh, and this is how we're trying to adapt in this marketplace or be competitive. So they list it all out. And what's also good about those is they actually use their own, every company has like their own internal language that they use, how they like to talk about problems, how they like to speak about projects. It's all listed in there. So that's a really good resource if you're trying to sort of learn what our company's going for. But truth be told, if you're newer to the industry and you're sort of just starting out, opening those major doors isn't the most likely a uh, uh, direct first step. It's usually going to be smaller companies that feed into those big ones. So it's going to be smaller distribution companies, smaller production companies, um, and they're the ones who are actually producing the core content that will then be delivered to those bigger players. So if you are looking at more of the originals that are popping up on a lot of these platforms or networks, uh, and you go look at the companies that are consistently delivering to them, those are the ones to look at. But whatever the big entity problems are, it's also going to ripple down to the smaller players too. They're sort of like, I, I call them like satellites. Like they're sort of satellite companies and they're always feeding into those big beasts. And so um, whatever the big beast is having an issue with, the smaller companies will be too. But that's a great way to find some interesting opportunities. Wow, that's fascinating. I might just do that just to just to try your example, just because. So go to a publicly traded company and look for investor info, and then kind of it'll be like a PDF or something, and, and see. Yeah, like it, the major companies, you can download it like in any conceivable format, and it's um, you can you can usually search through the document. So if you're looking for something very specific, like certain titles of movies or TV shows, or certain types of platforms that they might work with. Oh. Um, like if you looked into Fox, you know, Tubi is related to Fox, uh, Pluto is related to Paramount. So you can get in there and actually do a bit of research on the specific platform you're looking at. So, yeah.